Winner of three Oscars and nominated for Best Original Screenplay in 2007, this film is also number 145 on IMDb's list of the top rated movies of all time. The screenplay is an excellent example of emotional shields, a powerful villain, and pushing the audience forward in the story. Here are four screenwriting secrets in Pan's Labyrinth. Screenwriters are always told about the importance of the first 10 pages of a screenplay. That's generally how much time you have to hook the audience by establishing what's in store for them. It's ultimately about making the promises that you intend to keep later in the story. Since one page of a screenplay is roughly equivalent to one minute of actual screen time, let's take a look at how the entire story is laid out for us in the first 10 minutes of Pan's Labyrinth. First, we're given the backdrop of the story world. It's post-Civil War Spain, 1944. Next, we have a flash-forward opening that creates a question in the audience's mind. Who is this girl, and how did she get to this point? Notice how the genre is immediately established with a short narration about Princess Moana. Next, they quickly establish Ophelia's emotional shield. No entiendo para qué has traído tantos libros, Ophelia. Si vamos al campo, al aire libre. They also establish the emotional story spine when Carmen talks about Captain Vidal. Cuando lleguemos al molino, quiero que saludes al capitán y quiero que le llames padre. We also see that Carmen is pregnant and not feeling well, which becomes a major plot point later in the story. We also receive foreshadowing of Ophelia's tasks from the fawn when she puts the stone in the broken pillar. Most importantly, we're quickly introduced to the villain, his source of emotional pain, and what he desires most, the baby boy. We learn of the major source of antagonism for Captain Vidal and his men. La guerrilla se ha echado al monte, y ahí es más difícil cazarlos. Esos jodidos conocen el terreno mejor que nadie. And finally, we're introduced to two important characters, Mercedes and Dr. Ferrero, and we're given a hint of dramatic irony with their subplot. If you remove the 60 seconds of opening credits, this is all accomplished before the 10.30 mark. That's some powerfully efficient screenwriting. So the lesson here, you have only 10 pages to hook your reader. Make them count. The main story of Pan's Labyrinth is set in post-Civil War Spain. It's essentially about a young girl whose mother takes her to live with her stepfather. But when it comes to the storyline of the fawn, it all exists because of one thing, Ophelia's emotional shield. First of all, let's see exactly what this shield is. No entiendo para qué has traído tantos libros, Ofelia. Si vamos al campo, al aire libre. Ofelia, ven. He visto nada. Pero mira cómo te has puesto los zapatos. Ofelia. Mercedes, ¿tú crees en las hadas? Ya. So let's look at all of the complications that arise from Ophelia's emotional shield. She soils her new dress as she retrieves a key from the toad. She puts a foul-smelling bowl of milk and mandrake root under her mother's bed. She abducts her baby brother and gets herself killed. Guillermo del Toro gives us a scene that lets us know that the fawn doesn't actually exist when Captain Vidal sees Ophelia standing in the labyrinth by herself. Think of your character's emotional shield as something that has gotten them through life up to this point. You can use a story to expose how that emotional shield ultimately hurts your character. Remember this quote from Alfred Hitchcock? The stronger the villain, the stronger the picture. Since it's safe to say that Pan's Labyrinth is a strong picture, let's take a look at the incredible strength of the story's villain, Captain Vidal. Notice how almost every single character in the story struggles against this powerful antagonist. He makes his wife Carmen sit in a wheelchair, immediately placing her below him. This is how he greets his stepdaughter. Es la otra mano, Ophelia. He hoards all the village's food and supplies in the bodega, holding power over the local residents. 
When Vidal's men capture a father and son, we're shown that this villain does not offer empty threats. This is actually an important point in screenwriting. Now we know that this villain is for real, and we feel more suspense in future scenes. For example, when he toys with the wounded rebel. When he tortures El Tarta, we know he means it. Al principio no voy a poder confiar en ti. Pero cuando acabe de usar esto, me vas a decir alguna que otra verdad. Dios mío, ¿qué le han hecho? No mucho. Pero las cosas van mejorando. When he captures Mercedes, we know he's not above doing the same thing to her. We also know that Dr. Ferrero isn't going to survive his betrayal. So when we hear this, y si alguien intenta entrar, ella primero. It creates this anxious question in the audience's mind. Would Captain Vidal kill a child? His own stepdaughter? You bet he would. He's a powerful villain. And remember, the villains believe themselves to be the hero of their own story. So let's see what Captain Vidal believes in. Yo estoy aquí porque quiero que mi hijo nazca en una España limpia y nueva. Porque esta gente parte de una idea equivocada. Que somos todos iguales. Y si para que nos enteremos todos hay que matar a esos hijos de puta. Pues los matamos. Imagine how much weaker the story for Pan's Labyrinth would be without such a strong antagonist. Remember, we can't root for our hero if they have nothing to fight against. I noticed there's one thing that Pan's Labyrinth does better than most movies. It's constantly pushing the audience forward in the narrative, always making us want to know what's going to happen next. In his book Screenwriting, The Sequence Approach, Paul Joseph Golino points out four major tools that writers can use to constantly keep the audience's attention directed towards the future. The first tool is called telegraphing, where a future event of the narrative is explicitly revealed to the audience. Let's see some examples in Pan's Labyrinth. Faltan solo dos pruebas más y la luna ya pronto estará llena. Le matáis a él y vendrá otro igual, y luego otro, y otro más. The second example of driving the audience's attention towards the future is known as the dangling cause. Paul Joseph Golino explains a dangling cause as an expression of intent, a warning, a threat, an expression of hope or fear, or a prediction which places a question in the audience's mind for which no immediate answer is provided. Essentially, a character expresses a desire for something to happen, causing the audience to want to know what the actual result will be. Let's look at the example of dangling causes in Pan's Labyrinth. Vamos a bloquear el acceso al monte. Comida y medicinas. Todo se racionará desde nuestra bodega. Hay que hacerlos bajar de ahí. Que vengan nosotros. Cúrela. No me importa lo que necesite o lo que cueste. No comáis ni bebáis nada durante vuestra estancia y aseguraos de volver antes de que caiga el último grano de arena. Te voy a proponer algo. Si cuentas hasta tres, sin tatar tamudear, te puedes ir. The third tool is one that I've mentioned several times on the Script Sleuth channel: dramatic irony. Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows something that certain characters in the story do not. This creates tension as the audience wants to know what will happen when those characters discover the truth. Let's take a look. The biggest source of dramatic irony in Pan's Labyrinth occurs as characters secretly help the rebels in the struggle to defeat Captain Vidal. Dr. Ferrero succinctly explains why the audience is captivated with tension during the moments of dramatic irony. Look at everything that occurs to give the audience omniscient knowledge of the situation, while Captain Vidal remains unaware. Usted conocía muy bien al Dr. Ferreiro. No sé si Mercedes. Todos lo conocíamos, señor. Toda la gente de por aquí. Ayúdese los de Almonte, 
Es la única copia. La única, señor. A partir de hoy la llevo yo. La llave. Pero no pueden bajar ahora. Eso es lo que le está esperando. And finally, we come to the most powerful tool, dramatic tension. This can simply be described as somebody wants something badly, but an obstacle stands in their way. When this occurs in the story, the audience wants to know if the character will end up achieving that objective. Paul Joseph Galino writes, anytime there is dramatic tension, there are three parts. It must be set up, question posed. It must be played out, question deliberated, and it must be resolved, question answered. Let's see how this mini story structure applies to sequences of dramatic tension in the movie. Specifically, let's look at Ophelia's scenes in the fantasy world. Habrás de meter las tres piedras de ámbar mágicas en su boca y recuperar una llave dorada que oculta en su vientre. Solo así, el árbol volverá a florecer. ¿Eh? Iréis a un lugar muy peligroso. Tened cuidado. Veréis un lujoso banquete. No comáis ni bebáis nada. Déjalo. Rápido, Alteza. Entregádmelo ya. Use these four powerful tools in your screenwriting and make the audience want to know what will happen next, from beginning to end. So what other films of world cinema would you like to see me cover? Let me know in the comments below. A big shout out to my awesome patrons for supporting the channel on Patreon. You guys inspire me to create more and better content. Also, be sure to subscribe to get notified of upcoming videos from Script Sleuth. More great content is on the way. Thank you so much for watching.